Hello, I'm JW, and today we're going to look at capacitors, and more specifically capacitors as used with single-phase electric motors. Now, of course, not all motors have capacitors, it does depend on the type, but uh, typically you'll find these in motors which power things like uh, washing machines or dishwashers, some garden equipment like uh, shredders and some older electric lawnmowers, and things workshop machinery like sort of old pillar drills, lathes, that kind of thing, and you'll also find them in those dreadful devices which you put behind the toilet. So rather than having proper size piping, you can have those extra small piping. And then there's this dreadful mincing device that goes behind there to shred up all the stuff that goes into the toilet. And various other places as well, so I think like shower pumps and all kinds of other stuff. Now, uh, the capacitor is a fairly common failure item for these types of motor. And the symptoms usually are that the motor was working fine one day, but then the next day it just doesn't work at all. It usually just sits there and doesn't turn at all, and it may well make a humming or buzzing noise. And in some cases, the uh, actual motor will still turn, but it has absolutely no power or torque there whatsoever, and you could literally stop the thing rotating it with your finger. And in some cases, it may go in the wrong direction, or kind of other weirdness going on. And in most cases, it is just the capacitor. So we'll have a look at these and see how you can quickly and easily check these things. And then, of course, you can replace it with a new one. Now here's a fairly typical capacitor for an electric motor, and these come in various styles, but they're normally this uh, sort of physical dimension here. Some have uh, wires on, as this one does. Others have just terminals on the top for the screw things or just those spade type connectors. And you can also get these which have a threaded stud in the bottom, and the threaded stud is purely just to mount it to the case or whatever for the equipment. There's no electrical connection there. So it is just the two terminals, and say wires in this case, and it doesn't matter which way around these are actually connected, these are both black, so there's two terminals where these connect into the motor or the junction box for it, and it's just a question of connecting one to each of those. Now these have generally quite a lot of markings on the front, but there's only two things really which are of importance, and the first one of which is actually the rating of the capacitor, and this is in microfarads, and this particular one is a 10 microfarad, and if you're going to replace one of these, it's just a question of getting the one of the same microfarad rating. This is a 10. Say other values are available, they're generally in the range between sort of about 10 and 40. So uh, obviously it does depend on the particular motor that you've got. So as long as it's the same microfarad rating, then that's fine. And then the other thing here is the voltage. And this is actually the maximum voltage. Typically they're going to be around the 450 volts area. Being around, these are used on circuits at, uh, say, mains voltage in the UK, which is generally about 240. But being around, that's the uh, RMS, or the average value. The actual peak value of 240 is uh, closer to 340. So as an absolute minimum, you want something above that. So 400, really, absolute minimum. 450 or above, again, is perfectly fine. So not critical with the voltage, as long as it's at least 400 and preferably more than that. And uh, the other bits here, generally various ratings for different circumstances, and obviously production codes and standards it was made to, and so on. But uh, 10 microfarad in this case, and let's say at least 400 volts. Now when these things fail, the general symptoms are that the motor will not actually start, and it will usually just sit there and make a humming or buzzing noise. And in some cases it may turn, but it may turn very slowly or in the wrong direction. And if it does that, then it's going to turn with virtually no torque, or no sort of power there. So if it was, say, for example, a circular saw, you may find that the blade is actually rotating, but it's literally so feeble you could literally stop it with one finger. So uh, clearly uh, something had gone wrong there, and generally it is going to be the capacitor. Now these things are available fairly cheaply, you're only looking at a few pounds, sort of three, four pounds or something for these, so it's well worth uh, replacing these because it's massively cheaper than buying a new motor or new piece of equipment. Now I've got another one here which is the same rating, and the other one is actually busted. This came out of a piece of machinery or equipment. And in a lot of cases, you can just actually examine the thing externally and see what the problem is. Now, on this one, you know, this is a 10 microfarad with the uh, wires attached. And if you look along the side here, you see there's actually a bulge along the side here. And this is indicating that it's basically failed internally because they should be perfectly cylindrical with no bulges whatsoever. Other ways that these can fail, you can sort of find that the ends will sort of dome over. Or in some cases, you'll see this little... Uh, piece on the side where there's some like a burn mark or black there where it's basically burnt through the casing and in more extreme cases these can actually split open and some of the contents can uh, fall out or sort of expand in a disgusting mess so generally just a uh, quick look over the thing will confirm whether it's bust or not and so this one has just basically bulged around that area there 
Now of course you can actually test capacitors and that may be a useful thing to do. And if you have a multimeter, most of them now do have a capacitance function on there. This one is actually down here with the uh, symbol for a capacitor, basically two plates with a uh, wire coming off either side. So uh, just turn around to that particular function and this one we have to press the yellow button to, as that's actually in yellow. Leads go into the two uh, normal holes, so common and then the uh, one for everything else, so not the uh, current fixture there. And then all you do is connect the wires to the capacitor and then it will display the value of the uh, thing itself. Now this is an auto ranging meter so it's currently in nanofarads but when we connect it to this it should change that and we should see a value in the range of 10 microfarads. So there we go, so uh, microfarads and it's 9.55. That's perfectly close enough because these are within a 10% margin, so uh, that's perfectly fine. So 9.55, obviously well within the 10% of 10. So that's the good one. And I've just compare with the broken one, which is this one. I'll just connect up in the same way. So 38 nanofarads, clearly that's nowhere near the 10 microfarads we're looking for. It's literally thousands of times out of it, so uh, clearly that's broken. So in that case, uh, that will be disposed of and needs to be replaced. Now, uh, just a word of warning, when you connect certainly used ones to a meter, if they've come out of something and they are actually good, they could still be charged up. So uh, good idea just to short out the leads beforehand. If it's come out of a motor or something, that's not likely to have any charge because, of course, it's still be connected to the motor and whatever. But uh, generally a good idea just to uh, short those out before connecting it to anything. Now this is a multifunction tester and normally used testing electrical installations so generally most electricians will have something like this and you can test capacitors with these using the insulation resistance function and this is the one that typically applies say 500 volts to a set of cabling so then you can check the quality of the insulation so we'll uh, select that particular function on this one and then we shall see what we can do with it. Now if we get the good capacitor first, that's the one with the black wires there, and all we need to do is just again connect the two leads to the actual capacitor. Now a capacitor, these are actually designed for AC, but we can put uh, a voltage DC through them. What we should see is that when we first apply the voltage, the capacitor will charge up. So should you hear a fairly low value, which is then gradually increasing up to basically infinity. And once it gets there, then we know the capacitor has fully charged. And we can use the 500 volts. I mean, this one is actually rated to 500 volts anyway. If not, you could just step down, say, to uh, 250 or something. So uh, we should see, say, that uh, starting at a low value and increasing, and then basically stopping when it gets to the maximum, which is 500 on this particular meter. So let's see. So it's there, it's gradually increasing, so it's sort of 0.34 mega ohms, and then eventually it gets up to the 500, so basically it's now fully charged, and it's just showing as pretty much uh, infinite resistance. So that's absolutely fine. Now, something to be aware of here is that once you've charged up the capacitor, then of course it has 500 volts in there, so you don't go touching the end of those. You just short those out uh, to remove any charge in that. A lot of these meters, this one included, will actually discharge things that these are connected to, but just be aware that some do not, so always just uh, short those out if you're going to be doing that test. Now I'll just compare again with this busted capacitor, so we'll just uh, connect across here. And let's see what uh, this one does. Now, see there, it's actually holding around the value of about 56 mega ohms or so. And you notice it went straight there. There was no sort of gradual charging up kind of period. So that would indicate that it is faulty. Because first of all, it's actually leaking current across them, although it's in the, still in the mega ohms range. And also, say, there was no actual evidence of it charging up. It basically went straight to that value immediately. So uh, this will have now uh, discharged anything. So we'll just try that again. Just uh, reset the display. So we press the button, and then straight away it's in at the sort of 40 odd mega ohms range. Now we we'll just quickly go back to the uh, good capacitor. And again, we press the button, 
and it starts very low down and it's a 0.23 and gradually increases up and then it gets to a point where it just goes pretty much straight to 500 or basically in this case greater than 500 mega ohms so that's fine. So that's the uh, two main ways you can test these things, either with something with a capacitance uh, check on it or just use the insulation check there, which saying should confirm it's working or not, and say if it's bulged then just obviously replace anyhow. Now I'll just demonstrate what happens if you charge these up and then they're not discharged after use. And for this we'll just select a somewhat lower voltage so we don't uh, too much damage. I say this and most uh, more modern meters do actually discharge the thing that's attached to it when you release the button. But say so always uh, short the leads on those if needed. So we'll just uh, connect up there. So what I'll do this time, we'll charge it up with the uh, thing here, but I'll just disconnect the lead before releasing the button. So then it should leave a charge on the capacitor itself. So again, we'll uh, charge away there. And the sweat similar results just obviously on the lower voltage in this case. So we'll just take that away from that. And then if you take the leads here, now there's actually 250 volts on this. So if you touch those, you would have a rather unpleasant shock from that. But uh, if you actually have one that is charged, this is what happens when they are shorted together. So quite a nasty uh, crack there. And if we don't have the 500 volts, it would have been considerably more severe. So uh, always just uh, short the leads there before actually touching the ends of these things. So that's capacitors for electric motors and generally this is going to be the first thing you want to check before you actually do anything else because it's usually the one that's failed. Motors burning out and the windings failing is certainly not impossible but it's fairly rare and if a motor has actually burnt out and the windings have gone then it's going to be pretty obvious because the flames and smoke coming out of the motor, the smell of acrid burning and so on. So normally pretty obvious but if you get a motor that say, just suddenly doesn't work anymore then change the capacitor for it is usually the first step and so they're very cheap things, only a few pounds each. So that's it for this time and until next time, thanks for watching.